Hello my beautiful people, this is Thrice bringing you a project video, a how-to on how to mod the FSI-6 Fly Sky Transmitter for quadcopters. This bad boy can be modded with a multi-protocol module that is a 4-in-1 and can be used with drones such as the H8 Mini, the H36 JJRC model, and the Yashin 010 model. You can even use it with a variety of SEMA models. This 4-in-1 module is a great addition to have with the FlySky FSI6. Whether it's called the FlySky, the Ghoul RC, the Yashin, no matter the name, this is how we do the mod. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. First, you're going to need your transmitter. Then you're going to need your screwdriver. Also, the module. This multi-protocol module can be found on Banggood as well as eBay. I will drop the links in the description below. For this project, you will also need some basic soldering tools in order to completely install this multi-protocol module. The first thing you are going to need to do, besides removing the batteries, is take out all the screws on the back of the controller. There is only four screws there, so it's not really that big of a deal. As you can see, the back panel comes off fairly easily. There's just a couple connecting wires. You can just stand it up at a 90 degree angle here while you're working though. At this point, I'm showing you the locations where we are going to be attaching wires from the multi-protocol module to the different parts of the transceiver. Next, I'm going to show you the solder locations on the module. First, the positive output, then the PPM location, and the negative or ground port. The last thing you are going to need for this are some spare wires. If your module didn't already come with this, then you could probably scavenge these from somewhere in your office or workshop or a box you have lying around somewhere with extra wires in it. You always want to make sure to mark your wires so you can tell which ones are which if they are all the same color tubing. Now this is where you're going to be soldering the wire for the positive output from the multi-protocol module board. As you can see here, we are soldering to the point closest to the battery input plug. Next we're going to be soldering the other end of the positive output wire to the solder point on the multi-protocol module. Remember guys to take your time here and do not be like me. Make sure to use a smaller solder gun tip. It makes life a lot easier when working on these kind of small parts. This wire here is connected to the negative port on the battery bank. This is a fairly simple soldering procedure so I did not go through it right now. Now you have to go ahead and solder the negative wire to the negative port on the multi-protocol module. This port actually has an open hole, so if you have a small enough wire, you could really put it partly through there and solder both ends. Next, we need to solder the PPM wire to the controller itself. Make sure to compare your board to this image as I messed up on my first time soldering it. I decided to keep the footage of me fixing my mistake and then re-soldering the PPM wire to the proper location just to kind of give you guys an idea of where not to solder it and where to solder it. My mistake is your reward. The last solder thing you need to do is run that PPM wire to the actual module itself, which is what you see me doing right here. Again, the solder point is just like the negative, so if you want to run the wire through it and solder both sides for more security, that is a possibility. And remember everyone, always make sure to double check the strength of your solder points. You don't want something coming off once it's inside of your controller. Now you can see at this point I used the trusty rubber bands to keep all the excess wire together inside of the controller. 
The next thing to do is to find a spot where the module will fit and it doesn't rub against any other parts within the controller itself. You don't want to have anything breaking while you've already secured the controller together. Once the back and front panel of the controller are together flush with no wires sticking out and no parts rubbing together, you can go ahead and toss in the batteries and the screws or just the batteries to test to see if the controller still works. You should have no issue turning on the controller at this moment. If you do, please leave a comment below, go back and rewatch this video, make sure you didn't do anything else but what was in this video. If your controller does turn on but you're not able to bind following the proper binding procedures that you can find online for OpenTX, then you can pull the module out of the controller and try to turn it back on. And if you do not see this green light that you see right here, then that means it is not properly soldered. And there you have it guys. We're gonna leave some images here so you can see the solder points again. But besides that, make sure to check out Microflyer, FPV, the YouTube channel, as well as our production channel, LILT Radio and LILTRadio.com. Also, do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber here on this channel and hit the bell for notifications whenever we're coming out with different tech videos. But for now, that's going to be all, guys. Thanks for joining me. Remember to fly fast and fly high. This is Thrice, your microflyer guy.